subscribe. Hi everybody, I'm Marka. My name's Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today is um, a beginner's guide to conducting. Um, a lot of you, uh, if you're coming up to doing exams and things, um, ABRSM exams, Trinity exams, London College of Music exams, um, there is a little bit of conducting and some of the oral tests there that you have to do. So um, I just thought for that purposes, for exam purposes, I might just go through a quick little bit of conducting and perhaps a few hints and tips for the actual exam. Um, but just anybody else that's actually interested um, in just conducting so this is just going to be a very quick kind of overview nothing sort of um, in depth too much just more sort of basic conducting patterns and things but if you've ever seen a conductor um, you know on uh, on the last night of the proms or, or any, any other program on TV and you're just a little bit interested into to what they're doing and how they're doing it and things then this is a very brief kind of beginners guide to conducting um, so normally when exams you don't actually conduct with anything, you just sort of conduct with your hand. Um, a lot of choir conductors conduct with their hand because they can get more movements or they can get more uh, more out of the music from the singers by using their hand because you, you can get more movements out of the hand than you can from a baton. If you've got um, a smaller chamber orchestra as well you might like to move you might like to just use your hands rather than a baton, but a baton is actually very good if you are conducting more of a whole orchestra or a bigger group or something where you sort of need to reach out to, to the, sort of the, the brass instruments or the percussion instruments at the back. So um, a baton really is an extension of your arm, whatever you're doing with the arm, the baton's doing it as well, but it's it really is an extension of your arm. So just to quickly go through batons, this is my baton, this is my baton box there. Luckily, um, my dad is actually a carpenter, so he made this little box for me um, from wood. I'll see if I can just do a close up. So this is the, the box. I've actually got two, two batons in here at the moment and a pencil. And he's just lined it with a bit of red velvet and it just shuts together with, um, with little hooks there. So this is where I keep my batons. So I do actually have two batons inside. This is my main baton that I like to use and the other one is a symphony baton um, that I have. Uh, it just came in a little tube that I just use it to protect it. Um, this is my spare baton. I really don't like this baton at all because I don't like the way it's not really pointed at the end. It's it's not quite as long um, or I don't know it's just it really just the, the point of it it doesn't have a very nice nice point to it it's just the whole thing about it is just is not very good I'll show you why in just a second I don't like the handle of it because it's, if I'm conducting then it's very easy for me to for it to fall out of my hand and, and flick the person in the third row behind me so it doesn't have a very nice handle to it as well when I'm when I'm moving it can you see there's a lot of there's a lot of bounce in there as well, so if I, if I just whip it down, you can see there's a lot of bounce, but with this one, I move it down, it just does exactly what I tell it to do. So you know if you've got a good baton, because you need to check the weight of a baton. So right at the very tip there, just before you get to, just before you get to the end there, a good baton for you is when you can rest the baton on your finger like this, and it should give you more or less a perfect straight line. If not, if that's tilting one end or tilting the other end, then it's not going to be very good. You can still use it, but it's not going to have a nice weight to the baton. Therefore, you're not going to be able to get as much emphasis out of it. This one does do that as well. Um, it tips a little bit more, as you can see, um, but it's still quite nicely weighted, but I just don't, I just really just don't like the feel of it. So there are four main conducting patterns, uh, patterns, so you've got, you've got your 2-4 beat, your 4-4, four, four, your 3-4 four, and your 6-8. Now there is a sheet underneath in the description bar that you can go to, the link will take you there and you can print it out and it will just tell you the four shapes of the patterns and where you have to go to, so I'll number it, so one, two, three, so step one is where you need to go to the left and then to step two will be to the right. So that should make sense along with the video as, as well. So um, when I'm teaching for exams and it comes to the part where you've got conducting, I would always suggest that the candidates start with their hand up in the air always start in the air, never start with your hand down your side because you always, the first beat will always be 
down. We never go up. Always conduct down because it makes much better musical sense and everybody can see everything going down rather than something just going up. So always start with your hand up in the air. That way you will be ready to go down and you won't go up by mistake. So hand up in the air. I often get people just to point with a finger as well just because it's, you wouldn't necessarily conduct that way. I wouldn't necessarily conduct like this, but especially in an exam, um, it gets the job done and you can see exactly where you're going. So you might want to do some bigger movements than me, but I'm just gonna do some smaller ones just so I can fit in with the camera. Now, just before I go into doing the patterns, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera screen around so that you can follow exactly where I go with my hand. So if you're looking at me from the screen, so if you're watching me on YouTube, if I go to the left, you go to the left. If I go to the right, you go to the right. So I've purposefully, you'll see the room flip around in just a second. I'll tell you when I'm going to do that, but you'll see the room flip around. So everything will be on the different side so that if I were to conduct the opposite way so you could follow me, then it would be a bit messed up for me and I might end up making mistakes. So it's much easier if I conduct the way that I would normally conduct, but if I flip the screen around for you, um, then you'll be able to follow exactly what I do. So you don't need to go the opposite way to me or whatever, It do it exactly that I do. So if I go that way, you go that way. If I go that way, you go that way. So I'm gonna flip the screen around now. So. Everything should be really weird and everything should be all on the opposite side now, but just follow exactly what I'm doing. So to start with, let's go through the two for conducting. So you start with your hand up. It's very simply just down and up, down, up. One, two, one, two. So that's really nice and easy there. Um, moving on to three, four. So you'd start up. Now three, four is just the shape of a triangle. So one, two, Three. So you always want to go to the left. Follow exactly what I'm doing. One, two, three. Left, right, up. Left, right, up. One, two, three. So if you're conducting with your right hand, you'll go across to the left side of your body, across to the right side of your body, and back up again to the top. So you're literally following the shape of a triangle. So they will be all on the sheets if you print them out, then you can just follow exactly what I'm doing on the sheets anyway. Um, next is 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four is a little bit more complicated. So you're starting at the top. So 4-4 four, four is down to the middle, straight down the middle. So if you're cutting straight down to the left, back over to the right and diagonally up to where you started. So if you think of it as um, following down from the top of my head down to about my, my chest and then I'm going to the left where my shoulder is going right the way over to the right side of my shoulder and then diagonally back up again. So one, two, three, four. So conducting one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I know that's a little bit rigid and it is very strict and it isn't exactly how you would see a, um, a conductor conducting. What they would actually do is probably very loosely conduct the four but you'd still see them conducting it, but it would have a little bit more, I suppose, a little bit more flair to it as well, and how much you can you can catch. But the orchestra would be able to see that because they'd be able to see this part of my hand moving. They'd be able to see the end of my battle moving. moving. If I was conducting in an orchestra as well, I'd be bringing parts in with my other hand, um, but all of that would be decided depending on what I wanted to do with a score. So you're generally keeping beat with this hand and the other hand is bringing is bringing instruments in or bringing instruments out or stopping instruments or this can this hand can be bringing things in while this one carries on conducting um, you can be conducting triplets with one hand and um, and normal beats not triplets with the other hand so it's various different things you can do there so it seems that I'm teaching you very rigidly but for an exam that's perfect because the examiner can actually see it then but generally that is the idea of conducting but then obviously you can just put a little bit of flair on it if you wanted to go ahead and, and actually conduct um, to a real life group of some sort. So 6-8, um, now 6-8 is more commonly conducted in two, whether it's a fast or a slow 6-8 really because it's it's the same as 2-4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, back the other way, four, five, six. 
down, left, left, right, right, up, down, left, left, right, right, up. And what I suppose I'm doing is just making little kind of bumps, going back over those bumps. It's very difficult to sort of have the shape, but if you look at the paper, you'll see it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But you never really see a conductor conducting six, eight, because if that was going fast, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, that's very difficult for me to do that without looking a bit silly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. So I would just conduct down, up, down, up, the same as two, two. So, um, that's it really with conducting. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. It's something a little bit different that I haven't already done before, but whether you're just interested in just having a little bit of insight in conducting, um, I might do something a little bit more with conducting, um, perhaps in another video, but it's very difficult. I've been trying to work out how to do that. It's very difficult for me to do something like that with A, without having a big orchestra, and B, it really, really, really does depend on the piece of music that you've got anyway. But those are your basic and simple conducting patterns. So I hope that's been useful to some of you. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos and want to see some more. And um, I'll catch you all next time. Subscribe.